Hey everyone, welcome to Pearls of Eden. Happy Wednesday Wisdom. And I've got a word for you and it's powerful. It's in season on time. Early this morning, um, the Lord gave me a word from Isaiah 15. And it is powerful. On my heart, uh, I kept thinking about the story of Lot and Abraham. And then he took me to Isaiah 15 this morning. And it's just so funny how God will use situations in your life to speak a word into you. And so I'm looking at the story of Lot and Abraham and I'm thinking about it, how, you know, Abraham brought all this trouble and strife into his new uh, found promise, right? He's heading on the journey. He's walking with God. He, he was supposed to leave everything behind, yet he brought his father and he brought his, his nephew who was like a son to him because, you know, we have, we all have family members. Then we, I talked about that yesterday, how we all have people that we love and we want to see their eyes open and we want them to walk into the promise with us. Um, but sometimes it is best to let God develop people where they are. And when they're ready to go on the journey, he will call them forth. But sometimes in our own lack of understanding and in our hearts, we just want people, we want to see them arrive when we arrive. And that's not always the best. And it can cause complications. And so I'm here to give you an encouraging word, but also this is a warning, okay? So Lot and Abraham, they get where they're going. They're prospering, right? All is well. Everything is multiplying because Lot is under the care of Abraham. And Abraham, because of the hand of God upon him, there's favor with him. You know, when you're a righteous man or woman of God, there's favor that's attached to you. And people around you become blessed because of you. But this became such an issue because Lot was a person of strife. Everywhere he went, there was drama, there was division. And you'll see that later on in the chapter as you read the story of Lot. You know, he ended up getting in trouble in Sodom and Gomorrah. And, he, and who had to come and save him? His uncle, right? Um, so anyways, they separate. And Abraham is like, listen, Lot. Let's just go our way better for us to separate and have peace because he was just tired of the strife and the drama that Lot brought. And so he says, pick what side of the land you want. And of course, Lot picks what looks like it's prospering, lots of water, everything's green. I'll take that side. OK, Abraham is at this point probably so over it. That's fine. Anything to separate to have peace of mind, because how many of you know your peace of mind is so valuable? And so they go their separate ways. And how many of you know, even when you look like you got the, the, the sparse part of the deal, God can come in and multiply you and make where you are shine and bright and turn it into a Goshen. He is in the business of turning deserts into rivers, right? Hallelujah. So an oasis. So, you know, it just goes to show the faithfulness of God. Now, where, what is my point? We're going into Isaiah 15 and I have to give you a backdrop so that you perfectly understand. Holy Spirit, help me. So Lot goes on, right? He's in Sodom and Gomorrah. We talked about that last week. The, the vexation of a soul, a righteous soul in the midst of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible notes that Lot was righteous, meaning he, he did delight in the ways of the Lord. Okay. Was he perfect? Probably not. But he, he was right in right standing with the Most High God. And so when the angels come forth to lead Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah, because it was about to be destroyed for their idolatry, for sexual immorality, it was just high in sin in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And so he's leading them out, but the angel gives him instructions. He says, I don't need you to look back. I need you to keep forward and I need you to go way, way, way yonder, right? And so they're running, of course, they're getting away. They're not looking back except for one, his wife looks back and she turns into a pillar of salt yet they continue they continue on and lot sees this little place where he feels like they can have refuge and he says hey can we just please make this our stop right here this is far enough can this be it and he didn't consult the lord he didn't trust the lord he just saw what he thought he was able to make it to in his own strength and so the angel said you know yeah that's fine but was that god's best no and in the end, his lack of obedience and lack of faith to understand that he could make it to exactly where God said he could was going to cost his family so many things. Because how many of you know that Lot's daughters would later on 
get them drunk because they wanted to multiply and have children in the land that they were at. There were no other people. They were that. So they got their father drunk. This was an incestuous sexual act. And they had their son, first sons, um, each of them from their father. Yes. And they went on. And I think one of the first uh, daughter's son's name was Moab. And that's how you get the Moabites, which we're going to talk about today because they were a very wicked, evil nation and they came into conflict and they were a stumbling block often to the children of Israel. And as the Lord took me to Isaiah 15, I said, Lord speak, what are you telling me? Because it talks about the incoming judgment of Moab, because make no mistake about it, even though they were like first cousins, cousins, the Moabs and the, the, the Israelites, the Moabs were wicked people. Israelites were people that were still going towards God. They still had their face toward God. They, they walked with God. They were in covenant with God. But the Moabites, they had long left their faith and they were in sexual immorality. They were in idolatry. They were sacrificing their sons and daughters to Chemosh, yes, the God, and they would do some terrible, wicked acts. But the Israelites, they were walking with God, although no, not perfect, they were under his covenant and care. And there were often times when the Moabs had an opportunity to help the Israelites but they would not. And even so, as you get into the New Testament where you see offspring of the Moabites like Baal, um, um, what the one in the dot, Balaam, I'm sorry, where he tried to curse the people of God, but the curse could not stand because God was with them and a curse without a cause cannot stand. So every time he tried to curse God's people, he could offer nothing but a blessing. That's a word on its own, right? But what happened was, but because he couldn't curse them he said I'll figure out a way to pull them into sin and he brought women in their sexual immorality and they began to go after the lust of the flesh they began to go after their own customs of the Moabites and their ways and their filth and before you know it the nation was defiled and I just wanted to give you a backdrop drop now let's let's go to the word that the Lord gave me Isaiah 15 the burden of Moab because in the night are of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence because in the night Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence he is gone up to Bajith and to Dabon the high places to weep Moab shall howl over Nebo and over Medeba on all their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut off. In their streets, they shall gird themselves with sackcloth on the tops of their houses and in their streets, everyone shall howl weeping abundantly. Now, this is judgment that will come on Moab and they are, be, they are giving judgment because they didn't choose life, but they chose death. And so now they are eating the fruits of their labor. They are taking part of the seeds that they have sown in their wicked, evil deeds. Because the cup of wrath, God's wrath, it was full. And so when God's cup is full, judgment comes. Now, like I said, they were distinctly different from the Israelites. The Israelites were set apart in covenant with the Most High God. The Moabs had long left their faith. And they were walking in idolatry. This nation was so wicked. It was just as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, much so because they were practicing the same evil acts, sexual immorality, fornication, idolatry, the list goes on. And listen, I really urge you to go and take a, a, a tour, take a lesson, take a day to do some research on the Moabites and how it reflects on our modern day um, <clears throat> culture, because this was a civilization who had was so far removed from God and they refused to repent and they went and they made life horrendous for the Israelites. Hello, that were trying to walk in righteousness and, and they were under God's care. But this is a word of encouragement. I want to share this with you that even when judgment will fall upon Moab for their wicked ways, God still was providing and God still was covering the Israelites 
and he was still there providing for them. That's why I always say, even when judgment comes, God can put you in Goshen where he covers you with his light and his provision. Okay. Even when Egypt received judgment, the plagues, there was light in Goshen. When the Egyptians lost their firstborns, theirs were protected. Do you see what I'm saying? So the importance of staying under the care of God, the importance of walking in, in God's ways and seeking his counsel, it will save your life and it will save your children's life. Okay, so that's that's really the word that I wanted to share that I believe the Lord is speaking that, you know, we're seeing this in our own society where, where we have people literally offering their sons and their daughters to Kimosh, to Moloch. It's called abortion. It's just under a new name. And there is a cost there is a severe cost for the blood of the innocent. And I say this often that even up in, I think since 1973, America, there's been billions of babies, billions that have, their lives have been sacrificed under this altar of abortion. And it's sickening and there's a price for it, you all. There's a price. And time is running out. Time is running out. So we have a choice and we have to learn that, you know, if we want to walk with God, we have to walk in repentance. And that's what God offered. He even offered the Moabites time to repent. But when you refuse to repent and you don't think that you have anything going on wrong in your life and you continue to walk in lewdness, then there's a cost to that. And so Isaiah 15, I urge you to read that because it is powerful. I believe it's a prophetic word for this season that we're seeing what we're walking in now. It can give you such great understanding because there's nothing new under the sun. Just repeats of the same old thing, but different players in a different time and season. All right, you all. Thank you for watching. Stay encouraged, walk in the light, and yes, I will see you for part two. We're talking about the uh, replacement theory, and I'm going to explain that to you all. So that will come probably around, I don't know, I'm going to do it this morning, but I'll upload it um, later on this afternoon. And you know, I always come on to do like a little catch up, like a little short lunchtime vlog. So y'all will see me again. And, um, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your encouragement and I love you to life. See you soon guys. Bye.